This week we're back at Vopoli for another update to see what's been happening behind closed doors. Welcome to In The Loop. Yes, hello and welcome to Vopoli. And one of the questions we've had asked quite a few times is, where has 506 been? Well, it's here. It's been in Rockley Works now for a while, having a bit of TLC done and a bit of work done on the front end. Now, the red pipes you can see behind me, these are called the superheated elements. Essentially, before steam gets from the boiler into the cylinders, if an engine has a superheater fitted, it goes through those red pipes, back through the big flue tubes, where it gets cooked even further, gets rid of all that water, and it makes the engine work more efficiently. However, with all steam pipes, corrosion is an issue. So occasionally they need to be taken out and replaced. Now they've also taken the opportunity to do a bit more work refitting some of the pipes and also giving it a brand new smoke box door. That is nearly at the stage of completion now. You can see the seal here, which is taped on, which will make the seal between the smoke box door and the smoke box itself airtight. So hopefully it won't be too long before we see this back in action. Now let's head further into works and see what we can find. Now the last time we saw this, this tender was um, upside down, and now it's the right way up. This is for Canadian Pacific, our merchant navy, currently being overhauled down at Eastleigh. As you can see, the paintwork is going pretty well. The painters here are taking the opportunity to now get the bits which they couldn't get when it was upside down, or I say couldn't get, were really hard to get when it was upside down. The horn guides here have been machined, and the axe boxes are over in the white metalling bay behind me, right in the corner there. They've been white metalled, the next stage will be machining, and then they'll go on to the fitting. They've also taken the opportunity, while it was upside down before it was flipped, to start fitting the brake gear as well. Very important for a locomotive. Over on the left at the back, that's the tender for 75079, but keep an eye out. There's an episode for that one coming. Back here, well, you remember a while ago we actually brought out a video about Phoenix, the 08 shunter, which was essentially rebuilt from an insurance write-off. Well, the next 08's now in. Not quite the same, but it's 08377. This is in for more of a cosmetic and TLC job. So, to talk a bit more about what's happening, let me hand over to Scott. My name's Scott, I'm a volunteer here at the Watercrest Line, uh, currently working on 08377. Um, this is the second project uh, I've been involved with, with the 08s. Um, so just to take you a, through a brief um, of what we were actually doing with the actual 08. So we first started off in the cab. It was just a cosmetic job in the cab. Uh, unfortunately, that job has now uh, come to a halt. Um, unfortunately, when we started doing the cosmetic job, um, the roof behind me, unfortunately, was in a poor state of repair, it had to be assessed, and unfortunately, it had to be removed. So that's now currently behind me being repaired and hopefully that will go on shortly. So as we come down the loco, um, as you can see, there's a fair amount of cosmetic work being done on the loco. All the doors have been removed, ready to paint up the frame and all around the battery boxes and air tanks and the roof panels all across the top and the roof panels have currently been removed and are on the floor uh, over there. Okay, so moving on down, uh, I'm currently stood next to the battery box, which is currently having all the new batteries um, placed inside them. Um, above is the, obviously the engine, which is having a lot of TLC done to it. Um, all the, uh, basically it's having an overhaul. Uh, so they're looking at oil filters, air filters, traction motors, brushes, um, and anything that requires replacing is going to be replaced. Okay, so we're now at the front of the engine. As you can see, it's all cosmetically uh, in yellow now, but before this, we did have to take uh, the, the radiator covers off. Um, when we took the radiator covers off, unfortunately, we did find a couple of the elements that were broken. Um, they have now been replaced. Um, unfortunately, you can't see them because the radiator doors have been put back on, but uh, yes, uh, a couple of elements have, have been repaired. So this is what's happening with the 08. Um, we hope to have it finished sometime soon. Um, and hopefully when it rolls out, it'll be as good as new uh, for all of you to enjoy on the line. Now from standard gauge to miniature, up here at Ropley High Level, concrete has been poured. That may not sound exciting, but it is, because normally when you pour concrete, something ends up on top of it. In fact, what's going to happen is there's going to be a new shelter to help um, 
the shelter from the um, changeable elements we do get here in the glorious Hampshire countryside. At the far end of the field, they have extended to the four acre field boundary, reaching the boundary point. Now the plan, as we saw in the miniature railway episode, is to make a lovely balloon loop, so you can do a nice continuous ride at the miniature. So, still a way off yet, but plenty to look forward to. And from one side of Rockley to the other, welcome to the boiler shop, where we see boilers of all sizes, from the small like Kilmerston and Talithin number one, to the big meaty ones, like Canadian Pacifics. But we're not here to see that at all. We're here to see this. This is a stay. This is what we've been leading up to from the inner firebox being craned in, reaming, tapping, drilling, you name it, all for this. These essentially are spaces. They screw into the outer one, into the inner firebox and hold them in place, accounting for heat expansion, vibration, stresses on the boilers, and more. Now, granted on this boiler you can't actually see the inner firebox unless you're looking down into it, but if you look at some of the other boilers we have here, you can see quite clearly the outer and the inner. These are crucial for the boilers. We have over 2,000 of these, so for all of you that sponsored £25 for a stay, this is where your money's going. And it doesn't look like much, but these are absolutely crucial. Should one of these break in service, the engine will be taken out of steam, the boiler drained down, the whole thing cooled, and these will be replaced. Of course, some replacement jobs are easier than others. It just depends on where they are. The exact number of stays required for each boiler depends on its design. If you have a low pressure boiler, which is a bit small, clearly you don't need as many compared to a high pressure boiler, and especially one this size. This boiler works at 250 pounds per square inch of pressure. Um, to give you a ballpark figure, um, your standard car tire, probably around 35 PSI, 250, a lot more. But then again, you need a lot more power. Interestingly, Merchant Navies, they used to be 280 pounds per square inch when they were first built, but they were taken down to 250. There wasn't much of a performance drop um, less stresses on the boilers, and Charing Cross Station was thankful. I'll expand on that last point. You see, all steam boilers have things called safety valves. Essentially, these are valves that lift when the pressure gets to a set amount, so it doesn't get too high. And you may have seen it before, when steam shoots at the top, makes a lot of noise, and um, the crew, well, the fireman normally looks a bit um, embarrassed when I do it, uh, when they do it. I've done it a few times myself. Now, Charing Cross Station has a lovely glass roof and they found that when a uh, bullied Merchant Navy was below it, working at 280 pounds a square inch, and the safety valves lifted, well, some of the glass from the roof went with it. Hence, when they were lowered down to 250, Charing Cross Station was thankful. But anyway, this is where your money has gone. And though you will not see it in service because it'll be cladded over, just know that please play a vital part for the locomotive, and we cannot thank you enough. And hopefully soon when these are fitted, the boiler will be flipped back over, hydraulic tested, steam tested, taken down to Weasley, mounted on the frames, plumbed up together, taken and attached to the tender, and will be running. Ah, oh, sounds so easy. But the end is in sight. So guys, thank you for your support. And to finish off, we have a locomotive that isn't even ours. This is the 80,000 standard four tank on loan from us on the Bluebell Railway. You may have wondered where cheltenham has been. Well, essentially, we've done a swap. This came down for the gala, and it's been holding trains for the last couple of weeks. And when you're watching this, this train should be running this weekend for Wizard Weekend. So if you did want to have a ride on it, now is your opportunity before it heads back to the Bluebell. I can safely say, the crews and I have absolutely loved this fantastic piece of kit. And uh, I did notice the uh, 80150 group, the uh, standard four we have down at Alsford, were around as well, taking lots of photos and videos. So we've got plenty to look forward to. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>